What's up, everybody? I'm Jordan Crook. And I'm Daryl Etherington. And this is the Disrupt 2021 pre-show. We are here to get you hyped about the conference that we have in store for you. We're excited about everything, right, Daryl? Yeah, I mean, super excited. Look at look at this. Look at the, the expression in my face. You normally never see me express so much emotion, so that's how you can tell I'm excited. Yeah, if you know Daryl well, you know that this is new for all of us. <laughs> um, there's a lot to be excited about. We have meticulously kind of narrowed down, painstakingly narrowed down some of the things that we're most excited about from the show. We're going to walk you through those. Um, and we're also going to tell you kind of how to navigate hop in, which is our, you know, virtual event platform. If you've not been to a tech crunch event in the last year during this pandemic, then we got you covered. We're going to show you how to network, how to talk to other attendees, how to ask questions, et cetera. But well, before we do, do any it. of that, there's Including some new stuff new for this year. I know, I know. I'm excited to share with the team. Um, but before we get into that, let's start by just getting to know some of our Battlefield founders. So from the first session of the Disrupt Startup Battlefield, let's get to know our founders. Take a look at this clip. I'm Diamel Castell, founder and CEO of Inlight App. I was a child of no nation for 18 years. I'm Nicolas Rabot, CEO at Leos. I would like to be as effective at hunting mosquitoes as bugs in my code. I'm Shalapi Akin Pelu, co-founder CEO Harvest. I stand at 5 feet 3 inches. People call that short. But I tell them it gets me looking up all the time, literally and figuratively, to the next big thing, to the next big break. Hi, I'm Jericho Belka, co-founder of Tatum. I may be passionate about developer experience, but my real passion is a good chocolate. So you can find all of those founders at 10.45 a.m. Pacific time on Tuesday. That's when that session will go down. So if you saw something you like, that's when to tune in. Uh, for now, though, let's let, maybe talk a little bit about some of the Disrupt stage sessions that we're most excited about. Daryl, do you have like something that you're extra special looking forward to? Well, I mean, I'm very excited about a lot of the clips that are coming up and a lot of the uh, panels that we have coming up. They're all really, really good. I think... You know, it's always fun to see some of the the famous people, some of the stars come out at Disrupt. And I think uh, we've got a, a one who is a fellow countryman of mine, Ryan Reynolds. So, you know, Canadian, as I always yeah. bring up on <laughs> everything we ever Canada. do. Canada. Yeah. No. Are you Canadian? I didn't know. That's, yes. Uh huh. Yeah. And so is Ryan Reynolds, and he's at Disrupt. And uh, yeah, we've got a great clip of him. So maybe we should take a look at that. At the end of the day, it's really about, uh, yes, okay, yes, listening to culture, which, and one way to listen to culture is Twitter. That is not the only way. I mean, you know, Twitter can oftentimes feel like you've injected broken glass and bubble gum into your eyeballs and ears. So, you know, I think it's it's certainly that. It's other social media platforms. It's just sort of thinking and, and thinking about the world and trying to look at it from 30,000 feet sometimes and objectively thinking about your own experiences and how they might be applicable um, in, 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 in any given moment. Wow. Ryan is the best. Um, I had a blast talking to him and there's a lot more where that came from. And also I just want to be clear with the audience as well, who's watching right now. So the reason why we have some clips of interviews that are supposed to be happening soon is because some of our stuff this year has been pre-recorded. We'll let you know what has and hasn't, but the vast majority of the show is still live. So everything that's happening on the extra crunch stage where you can ask your own questions, all live, the battlefield, completely live. And a handful of our uh, our disrupt stage sessions were pre-recorded, which is why we're able to show you and give you a little bit of a teaser for that. And the benefit um, there is that we can join. Like I pre-recorded one too, but I can watch it with you. I'll be there. I can, can, I can be in the chat answering your question. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Daryl. That's right. See? You're so smart. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Uh, some other Disrupt Stage sessions that we're excited about. I actually, 
not to like toot my own horn because we just did one of my interviews. This one's also my my interview, but I talked to Melanie Perkins, who is the CEO and co-founder of Canva. And that was a really interesting conversation, um, not least of which because she just raised $200 million at a $40 billion valuation, which I think makes it one of the fastest growing SaaS startups in the world and probably the biggest Australian tech company, if not, maybe it's like the second biggest or something, but right. it was pretty cool talking to her. Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, we hear about rocket ships all the time, but that is really one. And it's like fantastic to see their progress, especially it's something that I know from firsthand experience, just talking to people around the industry, it's well loved and well used by its core audience. Right. So like, it's, it's terrific to see that that it, it deserves it. It deserves the success and it's getting it. And it's really, really uh, blowing up, which is awesome. Yeah. And one of the things we talked about was just how a company, because that company started off as B2C, right? It was all for consumers. It was free for a really long time. And then slowly but surely, they have started adder, adding pro layer, enterprise layer, um, collaboration, and some paid features. And Melanie really goes into detail on how they pulled that off and how they have used their free product as a way to market to their paid product. And they're on track to do a billion in wow. revenue uh, yeah. this year. So <laughs> there's some big lessons there for founders looking to kind of go B2C to B2B. Yeah. And it's a really great lesson in that pricing structure thing and doing it in a way that doesn't punish people who are on your free tier, but that encourages them to, to actually want to give you money. Right. So that's really cool. Yeah, lots of insights there. So definitely tune in to that one. That one's going to go down at 11:20 a.m. on Wednesday. All the times are in Pacific time, so don't get don't get it twisted on that. Uh, another one that we have uh, that that I was pretty excited about, and that was pre-recorded. So we have a clip for you. Another star, Seth Rogen, came and talked about Houseplant. Why don't we uh, take a look at some of the stuff he had to say? Hey everyone, I'm Matt Burns. Thanks for joining us. Countless cannabis brands are launching across the United States as weed becomes legal. Some are backed by venture capital and others by celebrities like Seth Goldberg. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. That was, that was wonderful. <laughs> So if that felt a little bit off for like interview content to you, then your instincts are correct. What was happening there? That's actually an outtake. So uh, our moderator, Matt Burns, who's managing editor at TechCrunch, maybe got a little bit nervous. I don't know. Um, but he couldn't for the life of him get Seth Rogen's name right. And so that was his third try. Obviously, he got a big laugh from Seth. Yeah, I think I think Seth actually like thanked him explicitly in that clip, which is really nice. And then <laughs> you you'll see the rest of the interview. They went on to uh, he was very relaxed. He was obviously having a good time, and it's it's just as much fun as that clip. So watch the full thing when it when it yeah. comes out. I think it's fair to say Seth Rogen's probably always pretty relaxed based on his relationship with uh, cannabis. But it's a great conversation. You can catch that one at 10 a.m. Pacific time on Tuesday morning. What else though? What's, what's on your list? Darryl? Well, I mean, we've got, again, like some of the biggest names in the startup industry and tech industry. We've got uh, Tope Awatona, who is the CEO and co-founder of Calendly. So that is amazing because I don't think there's, honestly, it's like one of those companies where if you really think about it, it's everywhere. And is there any other company beyond maybe like Slack or something? By the way, Teaser, also Slack at the show. But uh, Slack at the show. <laughs> but like, it's really had such a tremendous impact. It's so far and wide. And there's so many clones out there. There's, there's copycats, but they really were the ones that did it first and best. And, you know, I think it's amazing to hear from him about how he built that business. Yeah. I mean, there's so many interesting things. First, like how many times did we get pitched calendar startups since we've been working at TechCrunch, which I mean, between countless. the two of us is last 10 years. So uh, finally one was successful. He is from Nigeria and kind of like fled Nigeria due to the violence in that country, bootstrapped Calendly for many, many years, only took funding in the last year, I believe, and now has a valuation over $3 billion. It's just like one of those 
startup stories that kind of, I even have chills just talking about it right now. It's really yeah. cool. And that's going to be a great conversation to tune into. You can catch that one at 9.25 a.m. on Wednesday. Yeah. And then I think we got a we got to waltz all, all, all the way over to you, Daryl, because I, the last thing that I'm most excited about was your conversation with BioNTech and, and Mayfield. Yeah. I mean, this is the one I put it in here because I'm, I'm, I get to pick the the choices here. So this is just for my own <laughs> ego sake. No, it was actually a really good conversation uh, with Uger Sain from uh, BioNTech and also uh, Urshi Parikh from Mayfield. So they, we talked about, uh, COVID-19, obviously, but surprisingly, we didn't talk about that as much as you might think we we did. So we spent most of the time talking about what it was like to build BioNTech. And it was, we're talking about uh, Topes journey with Cal- Calendly. This is like similar in that it was one of these overnight success stories that actually took, you know, 20 years of really, really hard work. So I think it's one to listen to for sure if you're if you're any any kind of entrepreneur, but especially if you're in the science field or the biotech field, the lessons that he shares are amazing. And to think about where they started and where they are now is just such an incredible journey. Yeah, I completely agree. I got a sneak peek at that full interview and it's fantastic. So anyone, I mean, biotech, health tech, those categories are exploding right now, not surprisingly. And so this is a really good one to tune into to get some lessons from folks that have really done it well, obviously. Um, That actually kicks off the show. Oh, we do have a clip from that one too. That has nothing to do with anything I just said. Oh, cool. So I like, yeah, (laughs) randomness is like really key for me. So let's take a look. So we agreed to start a company, BioNTech. Uh, So the name NT was not possible because of Windows. Yeah. So, so, so therefore, we, we went to the name BioNTech, but NT is in big letters for biopharmaceutical new technologies, uh, and started the company. And we had a website. The website was stating under construction, and it's remained under construction for five years. <laughs> <laughs> well, as promised, random as ever. But uh, again, like I said, that kicks off our show on Tuesday morning. So if you want to tune in to see Daryl's conversation with BioNTech and Mayfield, be there on time. Get with us right from the start. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, time- you should never, ever turn this off. Don't turn it away for any second. You should spend the next three days glued to your computer watching all of this every single minute of it. Yeah, I think they have like special pants for that. Um, if that's what you choose to do. Yes. Um, <laughs> they're called sweatpants. Uh, I'm an oh, innovator. I thought you were talking about adult diapers. Okay. <laughs> I think I was headed in that direction. And then I decided to clarify in a way that would make me, nah, we don't need to get into it. Why don't we focus a little bit on our second session from the battlefield? Let's get to know our battlefield founders from session two. Take a look. I'm Arthur, CEO at Verdi. By day, I breathe Ike Tech, and by night, I breathe the chilly air on midnight runs. I'm Dr. LaVonda Brown, founder and CEO of iGage. I collect eye data, and in my free time, I collect elephants. I am Clarice Barry, co-founder of Animal Alternative Technologies. I have always wanted to save animals. So now, I'm in a meat company. I'm Gal, co-founder and CEO at Robotic. Running a startup is like a marathon, but to win with my hardware startup, that's why I train for an ultra marathon. I'm Devo Harris, founder of Adventure. Whether in the kitchen or the studio, I bring the heat. So if any of that was particularly exciting to you, you can check out that session at 12.55 p.m. Pacific time on Tuesday. 
We have more where that came from. But before we learn about some more founders from our battlefield, let's talk about the extra crunch stage. If you haven't been to Disrupt before, which is a travesty, um, then you don't know that we have two stages that go at the same time. So on the Disrupt stage, we talk to some of the biggest names in tech. On the extra crunch stage, we talk to also big names in tech, but about you know, like what it takes to grow, scale, fundraise, we kind of get into the nitty gritty, the details of, of how to build a business. Daryl, what are you excited about on the extra crunch stage? Well, I mean, it's another great slate over here, just like it is on the main stage. And we do have, I would say like, it's, it's crazy how many people there are on that that are of like just the top level, like the, the premier names in tech who are there and willing to, like give you lessons about what they did that helped them build their businesses and be and interactive too, right? Like take questions. There's live questions from the audience on all the uh, extra crunch content over there. So that's fantastic. But I think one of the things I'm most excited to hear about is, you know, how to raise your first dollars. That's one of the sessions we've got there. So that can be the biggest hurdle to overcome when you're starting out, right? It's like, that. who knows how to do that? Nobody, I don't know. Like right. you go into offices and you're like, know. give me give me millions of dollars. I do that all the time. No one ever gives me millions of dollars. So, I mean, there must be some secret to it. <laughs> do you and do that all the time? I, yeah. I just ask Are people. Are you just wandering in? I'm office? walking my dog and I'm like, Hey, what do you have millions? Can I have some? Like you look like I'm needing well. my first dollars, please. Um, <laughs> my doll hairs. Well, the cool thing. So that's actually been a really popular panel. We've done that for several years now. And not surprisingly, it's super, super popular in the past when it's been in a physical venue, it's been standing room only. It's get, it gets packed in our virtual uh, version of disrupt last year as well. What we added this year, which I think is interesting is how to spend right. that first check. Right. So it can be difficult and challenging to go and raise those early dollars. Normally it's pre product market fit and you just have an idea, you get that money and then what, right? Like how well, do you, then you buy a boat. spend it? I mean, it seems like there's a really easy answer. Is that, yeah. is that how they, what they're going to talk about? Are they just going to be like, which boat it's, do you buy? Or is it more? In, I don't think there's that? any question of which boat, because <laughs> if you're going to get a boat, you have to get one that a helip- helicopter can land on top right. of. Yeah. That to okay. me is the signal of success. Um, those are going to be great panels. Uh, we also, I mean, speaking of product market fit, right? Like, I think you're doing that that panel, right? Daryl, right. about product market fit. That's going to be a yeah. good one. Another one. And I mean, I have very strong opinions myself on uh, what products are a good fit for what markets, but I'm not I'm not going to bring any of that to this. I'm going to let the experts uh, take this one <laughs> Thank on. Thank God. <laughs> and we have now, a great you, panel of experts. Why don't you uh, stick to asking the questions? <laughs> So, so we have like uh, on that one guests from uh, Human Capital, Greylock, and Felicis. So like they they know what is up, and I don't need to say anything at all on that one. And then uh, we'll obviously be taking questions. So if people want to get their questions in about how to assess product market fit, um, how to how to do it, I think we talked about we you know had a preparatory call. We were talking about like how to do it from the angle of an operator if you're in a consumer. Uh, product company, and then also how to do it for specifically for the audiences of VCs, like how to illustrate that you have product market fit, right? So we're going to, we're going to tackle it from a number of different angles. And I think that one will be great. Yeah. I think that second part is something that trips a lot of founders up. There's like a lot of exaggeration and hyper, hyper, hyperbole, right. Yeah. And like, you can have small numbers that show a lot to an investor. So that'll be an interesting one to check out. I think we also have a, a panel um, called The Path for Underrepresented Founders, which has a speaker on it that you and I have actually talked to before, Hannah from yes. Magic Bell. I think this is going to be a really good one. Yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah, we had a great conversation with uh, Hannah Hannah Mohan, who is the founder and CEO there of Magic Bell. And she was on our podcast, Found, which is a terrific, terrific podcast that you should all right now go download and subscribe and listen to um and rate five stars <laughs> but yeah. also Go i do on think, the podcast app of your choice yeah yeah I, I mean i really am excited about this panel and not just because we had a, a fantastic conversation with hannah uh, where she was very open and candid about her journey as an entrepreneur uh and as a transgender under, entrepreneur who underwent her transition sort of like mid-career uh between kind of like 
uh, her starting out in the tech industry and then deciding to, you know, found her own company. So it was really, really interesting to hear her perspective on that. And I'm sure she's going to share that on this panel. Um, and it'll just be a great one overall. Lots of uh, amazing guests on that one. Yeah. Yeah. We have two founders and then we have the head of the female founders Alliance. And, um, unfortunately like the path for an underrepresented founder, isn't the same as the path right. for, you know, a Stanford graduate white male. Right. Unfortunately. And so, um, I think we're going to get real on, on what that looks like and, and some tactics and strategies to, to, uh, make sure that you find success. So um, that'll be a great one. We also have how to land your first B2B customers, which I think, again, like super tactical. Yeah. When you're just starting out, how do you get those first few customers? Because once you get them, it feels like there's a domino effect there. Um, but those first few can be difficult. So that, that should be an amazing one. And then last but not least, Daryl, do you want to tell them or should I tell them who we have oh, a fire boy. with on the extra crunch day? I, I mean... I think I'm, I'll, I'll let you do it. I want to do it, but I'm going to let you do it because I'm no, I have a servant's heart. I have a servant's heart. You do it. You take the honors. Oh, okay. All right. I will. I mean, uh, yeah, we have Reed Hoffman uh, on the stage. So that is going to be excellent. LinkedIn co-founder Reed Hoffman. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm super excited about that. Also, yes, of course, a terrific investor. And he himself, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to necessarily talk up competition to our podcast, but he has his own no. podcast, which you may have heard of. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty obscure, you know, like yeah. Reed. Yeah, not like ours, but his, you know, his, his <laughs> needs the numbers. So go out there and download. Uh, but yeah, we have a fireside with him. So I, I mean, that's going to be fantastic. I can't wait for that. Yeah, Masters of Scale is this podcast and he turned it into a book. So he's going to come talk to us about the book, which is about, becoming a master of scale. So if you're looking to grow your company, I feel like that's a great one to tune into. Obviously he has a lot of experience and with all of these extra crunch panels, audience Q and a is highly encouraged. So, um, there'll be more information on how to get involved with the Q and a at the end of this, but just come prepared look through the agenda, figure out yeah. what it is you want to ask and who you want to ask and come with your questions because that's the whole point is to get them answered for you specifically. So it's going to be great. Tune in. It's going to be awesome. Let's. Do you feel like getting to know some more founders, Daryl? Or I love. Is that I love the vibe it. for you yeah. right now? But I mean, yeah. startup battlefield is really the start of the show. So I want to hear from these founders. Yeah, I mean, I like to think of myself as the star of the show, but like I get it. I think second that star of the show. No, battlefield is show. definitely more important than me. But like whatever. <laughs> Let's just get to know these silly founders. Uh, check check out uh, our founders from session three of the battlefield. Hi, I'm Stevie Klein, the CEO and co-founder of Prenum. I talk in sarcasm, and sometimes people get it, sometimes they don't. This is Mike Lowy, co-founder of Tide Foundation. I got 99 problems, but a breach aim one. I am Judith, co-founder and CEO of The Blue Box. I might work studying how dogs are able to smell cancer, but when I get home, I am more of a cat person. Hi, I'm Delilah. Hi, I'm Alexi. We're the co-founders of Koa. When we're not building a digital bank for the next billion people across Africa, you can find us channeling our inner chefs making food for all our friends. That session of Startup Battlefield can be seen at 9.45 a.m. Pacific time on Wednesday. So tune in if you saw anything that you liked. And I think we should probably expand the conversation about Battlefield and Startup Alley. What do you think, Daryl? Yeah, I'm all for that. Yeah, so to help us out a little bit, we're going to bring on Nisha Tambe. She is the Battlefield editor. Nisha, what's up? 
Oh man, this was the most competitive battlefield we have ever had. So I'm pretty stoked. Um, and you're probably fe- a little tired. <laughs> uh, just a little bit. Sleep is a little elusive at the moment. Um, but so it is also for all of our founders. They've been working super hard. We have uh, 20 companies that we're featuring. 18 have been training for a couple months and two are wildcard companies that we actually pull from Startup Alley. And we have, man, do we have a great cross-section uh, of companies from clean tech and a lot of healthcare companies, you know, people really wanting to change the world, not just from building a SaaS platform, but actually, you know, making that human impact, which has been amazing to see. So yeah. is it the best battlefield ever, Nisha? Would you say? Is it the most dramatic I, battlefield ever? I think it is the most dramatic. I think asking me about best is kind of like asking a parent to choose between their kids. I love all my my startup babies equally. I just um, assumed but, everyone was was best. Like it's constantly better than the it, last. Like it gets better every year, so they're always the best. Is they're all, they're they're all incredible. And actually, our founders <laughs> this year, oof, our founders this year are really really cool. Um, we have like you know first time founders, PhDs. We also have a Grammy Award winner. We have mm-hmm. a refugee who's like changing the face of um, education in the United States, which is amazing. So we got quite the line. Up of, of folks for y'all to see. Nice. Wow, that does sound interesting. Do you? So you said it was the most competitive battlefield yet. What was the acceptance rate this year? Uh, it was. It's actually harder to get into battlefield than it is to get into Harvard. Uh, it was a less than one point six percent acceptance rate. Wow. wow, I can attest to that. I've applied to battlefield many times. I've never gotten in. I get into Harvard every year, and I just defer. So. <laughs> I mean, Harvard is essentially easy at this point, but. <laughs> Wow. Like just a little over 1%. That's crazy. So you had a lot of applications to sift through. Yeah. A lot of applications and they came from all over. Actually, we only have one company that's based out of the Silicon Valley as their headquarters. So that just kind of goes to show that, you know, innovation is everywhere and we're really excited to feature companies from all around the world. Yeah. So if for some reason, somehow, I don't know how this would have happened, but if you were in the audience right now and you don't know what the battlefield actually is, which again, I don't know how this could have happened, how you got a ticket to the show without knowing, but just in case, can you run through Nisha, like how, what, what exactly battlefield is? What do the winners get? Like, what are they exactly doing on our stage? Yeah, for sure. So Startup Battlefield is TechCrunch's early stage startup launch competition. If you've seen Silicon Valley, the first season, it's that big thing at the end. Uh, the companies are going to be pitching for six minutes. Then they do a Q&A with our judges and they ask a bunch of tough questions for another six minutes. And they're competing for $100,000 prize uh, prize money and it's equity free. So they just get the money and it's really exciting for them. And, and they're all early stage companies. So they will be pitching the, in the semifinals on Tuesday and Wednesday. And then on Thursday are the finals where we'll pick the top four to six companies who will duke it out all over again for that final final winning uh, winning company. Nice. I have a question, Nisha. Do you, <laughs> since it's virtual, do you do you mail them the confetti or how do they receive that? Yeah, they actually get a box and then they just throw it at their own feet <laughs> when we announce the winner. Can you imagine? Wow. In it's depth. Like, we're, we're trying to, you know, we also have one of those you know, boxes, whatever they're called, the music boxes that pop up in your face. We're, we're testing that out too. Nice. Cool. Okay, yeah, I mean, it's all about the A-B testing. Yeah, innovation. <laughs> um. Wow. Okay, well, that sounds very exciting. And I, for one, am not at all upset about the fact that we don't have any equity um, in companies like Dropbox and Cloudflare and Fitbit. So like, I'm sure you guys are cool with it too. Um, yeah, I'm happy about it. I'm the opposite I'm of I'm thrilled. Upset. Yeah, no, totally. Uh, so I, we do have one more batch of Battlefield founders to take a look at. Um, let's just throw, let's get to know the, that last batch. Check it out. Hi, I'm Wojtek, CEO of Stetomo. I enjoy fast, bumpy rides, the startup, and the downhill bike ones. Hi, I'm Dan Cohen, founder and president of Flight Material Sciences. And when I'm not buried in tech journals, I like to avoid winter sports and hibernate with my family in Montreal.
I'm David, founder of Keep. I enjoy building companies and my young family. My wife and I have two girls, ages four and eight months. I'm Quincy, founder of Carbix. When I get downtime, I like to cook the only food dish I'm good at, my super secret shrimp stew. I'm Megan O'Connor, CEO and founder of Encycle. When I'm not working to knock out carbon emissions, I can be found knocking out rounds in a kickboxing class. All right, that was our last grouping of Battlefield founders. If you saw something that was super interesting to you from that group, you can check that out at 12 p.m. noon PT on Wednesday. And from there, those founders uh, of the whole group that we showed you, a few will be selected, I think four or five, uh, to be in the finals. They'll pitch to an all-star cast of judges, and one will be crowned the winner. So it's all very exciting. Nisha, thank you so much for putting together such a cool cohort. Hey, I mean, they're the ones who did most of the work, staying up late and, and getting their pitches and demos ready with live demos too. It's not pre-recorded, which is exciting. Yeah, very exciting. I want to go back to the Startup Alley though. Let's talk a little bit about that because I feel like if you are new to Disrupt, that's a big, big chunk of it, right? We have hundreds of companies representing I think more than a hundred countries um, in our startup alley, in our digital kind of virtual expo hall, which I actually think is kind of cool that it's virtual. I, I feel like I would prefer that as mm -hmm. someone who is perusing the show. What do you think, Joe? Yeah, I mean, it can be really intimidating uh, in person. There's a lot there and you might feel like you missed out on something, but I think the digital version, it's easier to make sure you get around and, and check out everybody who's there exhibiting, right? And the other exciting thing about Startup Alley virtual or in person, you get the chance to maybe spot somebody who's going to be on stage on Battlefield because a couple of them are selected to become wild card uh, contestants in the Battlefield competition, right, Nisha? Yeah, I mean, you know, sometimes if you're a founder, like you miss an application deadline or something like that. But when you're on the floor at Disrupt, you actually get the opportunity to potentially compete. So we pick two companies to pitch on stage with all of the battlefield companies, and they actually get a chance to, you know, pitch and potentially be in finals. And we've actually had a couple of wildcard companies win, yeah. um, which is very exciting. So you know that there's a, a good chance for you to get that 100K. That's like yeah. Rudy. I don't know if anybody gets a Rudy meta or I, I get the Rudy reference. reference. I'm just barely, <laughs> you're just barely uh, old enough for that, you old man. Um, but but yeah, I think like I love this, the, those stories. I, I remember one one of a recent disrupt actually, where a company pitched at a Miami meetup, which got them a ticket to Startup Alley. They were pulled from Startup Alley into the battlefield as a wild card, made it to the finals and won. And what an underdog story. You, you wow. just love stuff like that. So, yeah. I mean, the Startup Alley is cool for a number of reasons. And you can also like do, get live demos from these companies. I just want to be clear, when you go into our virtual Startup Alley, you're not just like clicking through to websites. Like they are there on the other side. They'll give, show you demos. They'll video chat with you. Like you, you have full access to kind of get to know these companies. So. Um, I would take full advantage of it. Everybody wants to know what the next cool, hot thing is. They're all in Startup Valley. Essentially. And it's so. it's super cool. We actually beefed it up from last year too. So we have like, you can search if you really like, you know, hardware, you can look at that. If you like AI, you can look at those companies. So it's super helpful, especially if, you know, you're interested in a specific kind of company, you can be like, ah, those, there's the list. And then talk to all of the companies that are there. Absolutely. Nice. Okay, Nish. Well, thank you for hooking us up with all that battlefield info. Thank you for yeah, you putting got together it. such a cool battlefield. We'll see you. Uh, we'll see you on the other side. Later. So I think last but not least, we should talk a little bit about networking because why go to an event if you can't meet anybody, right? Right. I mean, there's no reason. But there's luckily, no reason. <laughs> I mean, we just talked something. about all the great. We put together an amazing <laughs> agenda, so it's not like there's no reason. But yeah. you also can make friends. Yeah. And luckily at Disrupt, you can network like, like gangbuster. <laughs> Another weird wow. old expression. 
<laughs> you I mean, look at you. Yeah, um, but there's so many options. There's so many options, Jordan. I can't get over how many options there are for networking at this point. Oh, my God. Yeah, we're not tired at all from Perfect for Disrupt. <laughs> so um, one of those options, which I think is probably the coolest one, I mean, I don't like to pick favorites, but we have Crunch Match at the show. Um, and if you were at the show last year, maybe it was a little difficult because we had like stitched together six different platforms this year. It's like right in the system. So yeah. crunch match, the way that works is you click on the crunch match button. You say like, Hey, I'm a founder in this category and I'm looking to meet, um, other founders in this category or investors who have invested in stuff like this before. And like, where are they? And crunch match is like, Hey, they're over here. And like, they also want to meet you. So just pick a time and meet them. And then you have all these meetings set up during Disrupt where you can go and meet the exact kind of person that you are looking for. And um, I just think that that's really cool. I mean, what kind of tool do you, that's pretty once in a lifetime, I feel like, to be able yeah. to be like, I need an investor who invests in me. And like, there they are, the meetings at noon. And that's what's like, I think that's what's so cool about this. And, and it's kind of replicating like the serendipitous meetings that you would have at a real event, just walking around. But it has that added vector of like, no, you can actually kind of like say like, no, this is the type of person. So like, I want it to be serendipitous and cool and like, oh, we just meet somebody who I never had a, a connection to before. But also there's somebody who is already in an area that I that I need help in or that I want to connect with for investment reasons or for professional advice or whatever. So that's great. And I think, yeah, I think it's going to be really awesome this year because we saw last year people wanted this and liked this, but we want, we really went out there and made sure to make it intentional and baked into the platform, like Jordan said. Yeah. And you know, like some of us are focused on efficiency. Crunch match is going to be great for you. Some of us just miss bumping into someone and being like, Oh, I'm sorry. I spilled some coffee on your shoe. Like what's your name? And do you want to be my friend? And for those folks, we actually have just like networking, which is just a button on the left rail. You click it and it'll match you with someone else who just clicked networking and you can video chat. It's timed. Um, you can ask to extend time if you're having an amazing conversation. If not, you're kind of saved by the bell. And it's like, okay, well that conversation's over. And if you want to, you know, have a longer conversation with that person, or maybe it, you really kicked it off, you'll have their contact information. It'll be like kind of saved for you and hop in. So you can go back and say like, Oh yeah, like it was really great chatting with you. Maybe we should, you know, do X, Y, Z. So that's another great option. Yeah. And this is the true, the true serendipitous wild card. Just who, who knows what's going to happen, but this is how <laughs> some of the biggest companies ever were made. This is how uh, Facebook was made. This is no, it's not. This, I don't <laughs> I don't have any okay? examples ready to hand, but like, I'm sure there are some companies that happen because of chance meetings. And so you could, you could start it. Yeah. I mean, that has to be true. It's just impossible. It's <laughs> not true. So that works out well for us. Um, we also have round table discussions that we're going to be doing. So you can get together with like a smaller group of folks on like a, a group video chat and talk about stuff like how to fundraise and some of the greatest challenges of, of starting a company, um, growth marketing and stuff like that. And you can also meet people in the chat. So um, at any given time, wherever you are in the, in the show, if you're on the disrupt stage, there's a disrupt stage chat. If you're kind of in the lobby, there's a full show chat. If you're at the extra crunch stage, there's a chat for that. You can click on people's names, start DMing them, get into a video chat, whatever, whatever suits your fancy. So um it's there are many many ways to meet people i think is our point yeah. and you should take advantage of them yeah yeah it really we see even during the weekly episodes that we've done for the extra crunch live series now called the tech crunch live series by the way um yeah. people are just people love doing it people love interacting there right and that's like those are smaller groups of people so this is a huge group of people and they're from all over the world from all different backgrounds from all different areas of expertise and interests and you can chat with them all well probably not yeah. all of them it's too many people but you can chat with a, a good a good chunk of them i have a blast going into the networking i did it last year i'm going to do it again this year and i love to just like pop in and be like hey it's me and like most people are like i don't know who you are and i'm like what do you mean are you not watching the show um which is great for my ego in the moment but it is cool to hear what people think of the show and you're bound to meet some interesting folks i know i have Oh, and here's a real um, just, factual thing that happened to back oh. up my <laughs> hypotheticals earlier. Startup yeah. Alley founders once invested in another company. 
I got that. That's a tip from Nisha. So like that can happen. All kinds of stuff can happen. Wow. Okay, great. (laughs) Well, the possibilities are endless, but in order to do any of this well, you might need to know how to navigate Hopin and how to get around at at the show, which is virtual. So for that, I am going to throw to a video that kind of explains how to get around, how to navigate, how to make it all work for you. Take a look. Network with Crunchmatch, powered by Grip. You can get access to Crunchmatch in one of two ways. After you registered for Disrupt, you should have received an email with the subject line, Crunchmatch is now open at TC Disrupt. Simply click on that link in that email to get to Crunchmatch. Or, once the virtual venue in Hopin is open, you can simply click on the Crunchmatch button in the left-hand navigation bar. If you have not received your Crunchmatch email, please contact us at events at techcrunch.com for assistance. Once you are logged in, you will be guided through a set of onboarding questions to help the algorithm know who you are and the type of people you want to meet. To make edits, click on the profile button in the upper right-hand corner, make the changes you want or add a photo, and press update profile to save. Take this time to also set your meeting availability by clicking on Manage My Availability in the left-hand navigation bar. All times will be shown in your current time zone. From the home screen, click on Meet Our Attendees. This will take you to the list of everyone attending Disrupt. By clicking on the green carrot, you can unveil several ways to sort the list, including by job function, company name, industry, and location. You can select more than one attribute to further refine your list, or focus on one attribute for a more broad list. Click on their name to reveal more details of their profile. When you find someone you would like to propose a meeting with, you can click the Request a Meeting button from their listing, or by clicking into their profile and locating the Request a Meeting section. You can add any other participants to the meeting by clicking the plus button in the Invitees box. Select your preferred date and time, times will show in your current time zone, and add a message indicating why you want to meet with that person. The more tailored your outreach is to that specific person, the higher likelihood you will get a favorable response. Then click send, and the recipient will receive an email with the details of your request. They can either accept, decline, or propose a reschedule, and you will receive an email with further information after they take action. Once the meeting is set, you will receive an email to add the event to your personal calendar which includes a direct link to your meeting. To join your meeting, log into the Crunchmatch platform and click on My Schedule in the left-hand navigation. You will see a list of your upcoming meetings. From here, you can reschedule your meeting, or five minutes before your meeting time, you will be able to open the virtual meeting room and take your meeting. After you registered for Disrupt, you should have received an email with the subject line, Activate your access to TC Disrupt. Simply click on the link to activate your profile and hop in our virtual venue. Bookmark this link for future access to the venue. Once you are logged into the venue, you will be able to see the agenda by scrolling down from the main page. The sessions are organized by date and time when it occurs in your current time zone. To add a session to your personal calendar, click on the Add to Calendar button and select the type of calendar you have. It will add the session, including a direct link to that session, to your calendar so you don't miss a beat. You can also now create your own schedule within Hopin. Simply select the Add to My Agenda button on the session item of your choice. When you are done, you can see all of your selected sessions by date and time in the My Agenda tab on the right-hand side of your screen. There are several places where you can access content. There are two stages streaming content continuously throughout the day. The Disrupt stage, featuring fireside chats and in-depth interviews, and the Extra Crunch stage, featuring interactive how-to content where you ask the questions. You can access these from the stages icon in the left-hand side navigation bar. Additionally, there will be several breakout sessions throughout the day where you can learn from leading experts in workshops or hear rapid-fire pitches from early-stage startups. To access these, click on Breakout Sessions in the left-hand navigation bar. These sessions will appear in the breakout sessions area five minutes before their start time. Simply click on one to enter the room. The expo is where you'll discover our partners and several early stage startups making their debuts at Disrupt. They are easy to find by category. Simply click on the category you want to see and it will populate the field below. Click on a booth to enter and find out more about their company. 
chat with a company representative, or sign up for the mailing list. Some startups will even have an introductory offer if you would like to try their products. If you'd like to meet the exhibitor live and they are currently available in their booth, you can click the share audio and video button to start a video conversation with them. There are chat streams for different parts of the event, making it very easy for you to participate in the conversation at any time. Simply type in the chat box in the bottom right corner and click the send arrow. You can direct a message to individuals by using the at sign, then the name of that individual, which will send them a notification to view your message. If you would like to send a message directly to an individual, click their name from the chat to view their profile, invite to an instant video call, schedule a meeting, or send a private message. Don't want to go through the list and meet someone serendipitously? Click on the instant meeting in the left-hand navigation bar and follow the prompts to have a quick three-minute chat with another attendee. Last but not least, we want to tell you about something brand new at the show. Today. I mean, do you want to do it, Daryl? Oh my goodness. I, mean, I have a you, servant's heart still. All, all these gifts. No, Jordan, I think this time it should be This you. one's for me? Okay. So we're introducing something brand new this year at Disrupt called the Passport. And essentially the way that it works is the more stuff that you kind of explore at the show, the more likely you are to win some pretty cool prizes. So there's an e-bike in the running. I think there's a Sonos um, sound bar yeah. that you could win, Bose noise canceling headphones. The prizes are cool. Like I want them. Yeah. Um, and so it's like a bingo card. Think of it that way. You go to the, the disrupt passport expo hall, um, and you sign up. And then from there, it'll be like, okay, did you go to an extra crunch stage session? Did you attend a disrupt stage session? Did you meet with a startup alley company? And as you go and tick those boxes, they're like, okay, now you're in the running and you could be the one to win. So it rewards you for checking out all aspects of the show, which is something that you want to do anyway. You were going right? to do it anyway. You so now you're just anyway. getting paid for it, kind of. <laughs> might, as well just, <laughs> might as well just sign up for the Disrupt Passport. Um, so I think that's cool. I'm going to sign up for it. I want to win. So I don't, I don't think that's... I think that's against the terms. You think I'm disqualified? Conditions of the contest. <laughs> but yeah, you can win in your heart. I won just the moment that I got on camera with you, Daryl. <laughs> Me too, Jordan. Me too. Always. Yeah, we're meant to be. All right. Well, I think we're done for today. I feel like we've been talking for a really long time and you're just excited to get a good night's rest so that you can wake up refreshed and ready to go tomorrow, I think. So with that, we're going to say goodbye. The show starts tomorrow morning, Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. Pacific time. And we cannot wait to see you there. Can't wait. It's going to be a great one. Woohoo!